So my family's here. They're going to actually ask me any questions that I may uh, leave out. But a user or subscriber asked me to do a tutorial. A tutorial? Tutorial. Tutorial. <laughs> Thank you, honey. On using this VidBox and the software. So the software I use is VidBox VHS to DVD. Uh, let me see it here. DVD 9.0 Deluxe. Now, I've had, I've used this, as you can see, I have several of them because I always get nervous about backups. Plus, I've purchased additional year ones because it, not necessarily the hardware was upgraded, but the software was upgraded. So I've gone from the 6 or the 7.0 to the 9.0. 9.0, I like it a lot, the software. Um, I think the difference, one of the differences was, and I'm not 100% sure since I'm only running the 9.0 version, is that the 9.0 lets you do 720p, which is just below 1080p for HD quality. Now, we are transferring VHS tapes, um, VHS tapes to digital. Let me just eject this. So. so VHS tapes to digital. So the way we're doing it is in the back of the VCR, the vid box itself, you have two different connection options, not HDMI, just composite or RCA or what other name did they have for these? I don't remember. I just remember there's a the colored plugs. <laughs> okay, and they were composite. I think they call composite. That's a proper thing. But or aux. I, no, aux is for audio. Mm. So this would be more. Um, I think we used to call them RCA cables because RCA made these cables. Mm. So um, I, I think I'm not sure. Uh, correct me below if anything. Um, but I think their proper term is composite. So anyway, we'll see on the software it comes up. This is S video, which is a little bit of a higher quality, but a lot of the VHS tapes didn't have. S video. This one doesn't have S video. It only has for the cable and the composite connection. It doesn't have for S video at all. So in this VCR itself, it doesn't do stereo. Okay. So the way I work around that is I bought a a one into two to give it my own type of stereo, and that way uh, the actual software will record it coming from two different sources, even though it's the same audio. So that's my idea behind that because some of them didn't come it's mono You know one direction. So with this it should separate the audio and record it digitally in stereo So two different should sources work. from one audio, right? Yes So that's why I have there then I have the yellow cable So these right here and you can get this on Amazon or eBay or anything. It's a it's a you know one into two or Y cable and Then it goes into the back of the actual device itself. Okay, and this is the USB connection. The USB connection has a, can you hold this one? Has a mini USB port right here. This is old type, but still works. And when it comes to transferring the video from this, I don't put it on a hub. So I don't use like a USB hub at all because to me it's gonna either reduce the quality or the bandwidth or you're gonna have issues. You, you should connect the USB cable directly. I have it here connected to the actual device that you're recording to. Like a computer, desktop? Yeah, it should be. Like if you're using a desktop, I would suggest plugging into the front ports. Um, they tend to be the fastest. On a laptop, make sure that you get the fastest port, which is all of them are the fast ones. But in my case, um, I just put it here kind of out of the way so it's not here and it fits perfectly. And then I run the program. So let me show you the program. This is the actual program. This is the 9.0 software. And this, I'm going to show you because this video could be really, really long. So I'm just going to show you how I use it. Okay. So the way I use it is I always choose the advanced mode because there's so much more options in the advanced mode. Okay. Then the easy mode, photo, audio. I get to choose the resolution and, and where I save the file to and the type of file, the type of file as well. So... The only issue with this is that it doesn't give me, I believe we're up to MPEG-4 or higher quality uh, different file formats. It just gives you these here, which is the DVD ones, uh, the different options. I choose MPEG-4, uh, MPEG-2 file, which uh, is the extension. I, I don't want to get too detailed in that, but for me, I think that's the best quality. I, I can work with it. I can edit it. It's, it's an, a... a produces enough data that you can do things with it. 
but that's just me. Different people have different options um, and different reasons for using other ones. They might want to use uh, lower resolution or lower file uh, creation. They don't want to make the file smaller. I like the file as big as I can make it. Plus the fact that it gives you the recording option of record up to six hours. So the VHS tapes, you know, back in the day we had two hour SP and I forgot what the other one was for four hour VHS tapes and six hour. Remember? I think they even came out with an eight hour VHS tape. Not 100% sure, but I believe uh, they might have gotten to that hot. But I remember six hour tapes. You remember six hour tapes? Six hour. Yeah. So this, well, if your VHS tape is one of those, you'll be able to capture everything because it's all about capturing the memories. Um, I always choose, for me, again, I always choose the best. Uh, I always, I have big hard drives to keep all my data. I, I just rather have, capture it at the best quality that I could. Um, I usually use NTSC because it's the American uh, one, I believe. And 720 by 480 is the one I choose, which is the highest resolution. A lot of the other Capturing devices only offer up to 640 by I forget what the other one is But this has been the only one I found so far that does the 720 with composite HDMI it's a different story, but there's not many VHS players that come with HDMI. They are out there. I had one But it stopped working um, And then this is the location the source and all you do is press OK to start recording so I mean well to be okay with the actual settings themselves. And if you want to go back to change something, you just click on these two uh, sprockets here. See that? And that'll take you back to the page, okay? To make any changes you may want to make. Okay, then you press the record. Now, oh, also. Don't press record because your video is not inside. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. So the aspect ratio 43 that's what we used to from the 80s remember just standard box or 16 by 9 that'll give you the wide view but i find that when you use 16 by 9 and again this is just my view the way i see it um when you record vhs tapes that were originally 4 by 3 and you do 16 by 9 it kind of squishes the top and the bottom and it doesn't give you the full frame or the full picture that it was recorded originally so I like to capture the original. You want to switch that in software later. You should be able to. For me, I'm going to capture it at the 4.3 because that was the uh, aspect ratio for most VHS tapes or uh, video from back in the day. Um, so that's one. Two, one of the nice things about this too, it doesn't work all the time and I still have not figured it out. When you press record, right, sometimes, and it goes by tape, not by the actual VHS player or the software. It's It depends on the tape. Somehow the tape signals the software that it's not playing. So when you press record, it'll say press play to start recording and it'll automatically record. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it'll just start recording the blue screen. So let, let's just do that. Press record to see what happens. Okay. And it didn't do that, so it's, and now I have to pay attention because um, if I come back, it'll record hours and hours, and I'll have to edit it, which is not a big deal. I usually just trim it. That's a lot faster uh, to do. Uh, but right now it's recording. Twenty seconds. Let's put in the tape, and it'll come to play. And that's some old school uh, talent show video that was recorded in the early 80s. Okay, do you guys have any questions? No. No, not yet. Not yet, okay. Um, so, uh, please feel free to ask any questions below. I'll tell you my best. You know, I don't, um, I'm a regular user. I'm a, I guess I would be considered a prosumer. I actually do have a question. Does it stop by itself recording when the video ends? No, that's why I said earlier that depending on what you choose, oh. you got to come back okay. or be around because it'll be continuously. Yeah, I gotta, I'm got i going to have to use the cleaner for that oh, okay. uh, to stop that from happening. Um, so that's your videotape. Like it's a videotape, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me stop that. Um, so on some of the, um, some of the um, VHS tapes, I should rephrase it. Some of the VHS tapes 
if it has the option where you press record and it says press play to record, right? Mm -hmm. It will automatically stop when the tape stops. It knows when the blue screen comes up and it'll just stop. Oh, okay. So yes and no in regards to what you're saying. And this uh, scenario with this VHS tape, no, it's not going to stop. I already checked it. It's, it's, you know, it started recording before I even pressed play. Okay. But some, for some reason, some odd reason, some of the tapes will, when you press record, will only start recording as soon as you um, press play on the VHS player. Oh. And then will automatically stop. So whatever okay. that is, if anybody knows what that is, please let me know because I would love to um, do it myself. Uh, if it doesn't do it automatically, I just end up having to just come back and, and wait around uh, to get that uh to stop the tape so i'm not taping 26 hours extra mm. well it only does up to six hours mm. um there is software you use you could trim it just cut it right out which is not a big deal um but if you don't you know it's just another software you gotta use or something else you gotta do it'd be nice just to get it right at the end and press stop okay. so it can happen um but it doesn't happen all the time anything else no that's it okay all right so i hope the video helps i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you bye now bye, bye. And before I go, I just want to say that the audio itself, I have my computer, I put my computer on mute because if it's not on mute, um, I'm going to hear all this and people in the home, they don't want to hear the actual recordings. It's, it's distracting. So I just leave this on mute, but I, it's still recording audio, even though my computer's on mute. And I leave this at zero. That's usually the setting I leave it at, it's zero. I've gotten the best audio that I could get from leaving it like that. Um, I haven't had a situation where the VHS tape is, uh, the audio is so low that I have to raise the bandwidth. So far, so good. Um, uh, the audio, I leave it at zero. That's just, these, and these are just my settings. Uh, I am not a super professional. This is for myself that I'm doing this for. I'm just if this video can help anybody great you know or um you know i'm just sharing my experience